Hello there. In this video, we're going to continue our discussion of fractional calculus. So in the previous videos, we've derived an expression known as the grunewald litnikov derivative, which is given by the expression, the derivative with terminal point A of x of order alpha of some function f is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of the quotient n divided by x minus a to the power alpha times the finite series from l is equal to zero to n of the alternating series negative one to the l of gamma, not f, gamma, of alpha plus one over l factorial times gamma alpha plus one minus l times the function evaluated at the point x minus l over n times x minus a. Definitely a long expression for the expression of a derivative, but in either case, this is what we call the grunewald letnikov derivative. Now, in terms of finding derivatives with this expression, uh, in practice, uh, it's not very practical and definitely not very easy, but that doesn't mean that you cannot figure them out. Uh, so what we're going to be focused on in this video is introducing, if you're not already familiar with, uh, is what we call negative binomial coefficients. So we'll derive what we call negative binomial coefficients, and we'll use these negative binomial coefficients to sort of rewrite the grunewald letnikov derivative in a slightly different way that's going to be used to derive a connection to a very more easier uh, representation in the upcoming videos. So before we start talking about negative binomial coefficients, let us first start off by reviewing what we mean by a just normal binomial coefficient. So recall, recall that the binomial coefficient alpha l is defined to be equal to alpha factorial over l factorial times alpha minus l factorial. This is its definition, and typically we assume alpha and l are natural numbers. But as we should already know, we can extend um, the binomial coefficients and vectorials uh, using gamma functions uh, to sort of uh, have more of a domain for this function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, expand alpha factorial and alpha minus l factorial to get a more simpler, simpler uh, expression. So alpha l uh, is the same as writing alpha times alpha minus one times alpha minus two all the way down to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand all the way down to alpha minus l plus one and alpha minus l factorial. And on the bottom I just have l factorial and alpha minus l factorial. I know I can expand down to this term because I already know that alpha factorial is going to be bigger than alpha minus l factorial. So that means I know I will have alpha minus l, fact, alpha minus l term in this alpha factorial expansion. So I always know I can obtain that. So if that is true, then that means I can cancel this in general. So that means the binomial coefficient alpha l is the same as writing alpha times alpha minus one times alpha minus two all the way down to alpha minus l plus one all divided by l factorial. So let us sort of look at this expression uh, to sort of see what we have. So one of the questions that I'm going to ask is how many terms does alpha, alpha minus one, alpha minus two, down to alpha minus l plus one have? So we can look at a couple examples here. Uh, for example, uh, consider uh, seven, two. So 7, uh, 2 is going to be equal to 7 times 6 all the way down to 7 minus 2 plus 1 all over 2 factorial. So 7 minus 2 plus 1 is going to be 7 minus 2 is 5 plus 1 is 6. So the top is just going to be 7 times 6 divided by 2 factorial. So how many terms does the top have? So this has 2 terms. And let us also look at, uh, say, 7, 5. 
So 7, 5 is going to be 7 times 6, all the way down to 7 minus 5 plus 1, all over 2 factorial. So 7 minus 5 is going to be 2 plus 1 is 3. So we have 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3, all over 2 factorial. And how many terms does our numerator have here? So we have 5 terms. So I'm not going to prove it here, but at least notice this, that two terms and five terms is obvious from the bottom coefficient of the binomial coefficient expression. So that means alpha over L, which is equal to alpha times alpha minus one times alpha minus two down to alpha minus L plus one over L factorial has L terms in the numerator. And I'm not going to prove that here, but uh, you can use this uh, using mathematical induction, for example. Okay, great. So we're going to now consider minus alpha L. So I'm going to replace alpha with negative alpha everywhere in this expression. So when I do that, what do I have? Well, I have negative alpha times negative alpha minus 1 times negative alpha minus 2 all the way down to negative alpha minus L plus one all over L factorial. And now I'm going to factor out negative one out of every single one of the L terms. So once I do that, what do I have? So I have negative alpha L is equal to negative one to the power L times, and so what do I have on the top? So I have alpha, times alpha plus one, times alpha plus two, all the way up to alpha plus L minus one, all over alpha, I mean L factor. So some people uh, abbreviate this expression in another way. So some people rewrite this as negative alpha L is equal to negative one to the power L times alpha L, and this is usually what we call a negative binomial coefficient. And that gives us that expression. So if that is the case, then what does that mean? So we have negative alpha and L is going to be equal to negative 1 to the power L times, so we have alpha times alpha plus 1 times alpha plus 2 all the way up to alpha plus L minus one. On the bottom we have L factorial. And what I can now do is I can multiply top and bottom by alpha minus one factorial. So alpha minus one factorial is going to include all the terms starting at alpha plus one minus one, alpha minus L plus one, all the way down to one, which is where alpha minus one factorial will go. And then I can express these expressions as gamma functions because this thing is exactly gamma of alpha. And the numerator is just the gamma of alpha plus L. So therefore, we can say that negative alpha L is equal to negative one uh, to the power L times gamma alpha plus L all over L factorial times gamma alpha. So what will we use this negative binomial coefficient expression for? So now let us return to our grunewald letnikov derivative definition and see if we can take advantage of this. So recall that d uh, a of x of alpha of f is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of n divided by x minus a raised to the power alpha times the summation from n, l is equal to zero to n of negative one to the l times gamma of alpha plus one all over l factorial times gamma of alpha plus one minus l times f of x minus l over m times x minus a. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to replace alpha with negative alpha. So when I do that, what will I get? So remember, we can rewrite this expression, uh, dAx alpha f 
more simply as the limit as n goes to infinity of n over x minus a to the alpha times the sum from negative 1 to l of alpha l, the binomial coefficient from l is equal to 0 to n, of f of x minus l over n times x minus a. So we're going to be replacing alpha with negative alpha. And I'm not going to replace this alpha, and I'll give you some time to sort of think about uh, why we're going to do that. Um, but I'll just leave that as an open statement now. So if I do this, what do I have? So d of a of x to the minus alpha of f is going to be equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of n divided by x minus a to the alpha times the sum from l is equal to 0 to n of negative 1 to the l times minus alpha l times f of x minus l over n x minus a. Now I already know what this expression is equal to. That is going to be my expression for my negative binomial coefficient. So therefore I can replace this expression with my gamma alpha. So once I do that, what do I get? So that's going to give me the negative alpha derivative with base point a of x of f is going to be equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of n divided by x minus a raised to the alpha times the sum from l is equal to 0 to n. And now we can express this with our gamma expression. So we know that this is going to be equal to gamma alpha plus l all over l factorial times gamma of would be uh, alpha times f of x minus l over n times x minus a. So this expression gives us an alternative representation for the grunewald letnikov derivative. Now, if you sort of look at this, this is pretty much going in the opposite direction as the standard definition would go. Like instead of the second derivative, now this is sort of talking about the negative second derivative. Uh, which in a way is talking about like integration, for example. Uh, and this is pretty much where the narrative uh, will go soon after this. Um, but this is the alternative representation that is going to be used to get us a more practical definition of the fractional derivative.